Hope Hicks is said to be one of the few people in the West Wing that President Trump trusted. New York Magazine profiled the former White House communications director in a revealing cover story titled What Hope Hicks Knows. Joining me now, Olivia Nutzi, the Washington correspondent for New York Magazine, who, who wrote this piece. So she refused to go on the record with you. You spent a lot of time with her, though, spoke to, what, 30 people uh, around her. And, and it's a fascinating read. Thank you. I have to say, especially when we get a sense of where she was in this decision to leave the White House. And as you point out, she had struggled with it and thought about leaving a couple of times before it actually happened. So right. why did she stay? It's, you know, it's an interesting question. It's sort of the central question with Hope Hicks. Why did she go there in the first place in 2015? And then why did she stay? I think in 2015, it was a much easier choice to make. It, di it didn't seem like that serious. Um, nobody knew that President Donald Trump would become President Donald Trump. Nobody knew he would even win the primary at that point. But as she made choices along the way to continue to be there throughout the most controversial political moments of, of our time. Uh, and I think in the end, it's really, it was about loyalty for her. I think that's why she stayed. And, you know, people talk about loyalty with Trump staffers all the time. But I think for her, it really was about, you know, she made this agreement basically to support the president. And I think... I think she did not feel uh, like it would be holding up that her end of the bargain if she left. He relied very heavily, very heavily on her, as we know. And you walk through some of this in the piece that in many ways, I mean, she was his right hand woman. Mm -hmm. She would remember details. She has near photographic memory. She right, kept, it's very deep in it, a lot of ways. It is in a lot of ways. <laughs> she keeps these amazing notes. And yet John Kelly was, to your reporting, extraordinarily dismissive of her. How did that dynamic figure in? Well, I don't think it, it worked out in the end, right? One of them is leaving the White House and another one, John Kelly, is, is seeming to be on his last leg, according to a lot of different reports. Um, but I think, basically, John Kelly, it seems like when he came in, if you remember the kind of guy John Kelly is, there's this 29-year-old woman in there with all of this power who's feet from the Oval Office. The president relies on her more than anybody else. And he can't quite make sense of her, much in the same way that he couldn't quite make sense of Jared and Ivanka. Um, and so I think that he did come to respect her, but there, were, uh, there was apparently a lot of griping, uh, a lot of insults, a lot of under-the-breath kind of comments, according to my sources. Uh, you also suggest that Corey Lewandowski may be the person who exposed these allegations against Rob Porter. Why would he want to do that? What's the end game for him? It's complex. I don't know how much, how much time we have here, but it seems like getting rid of Rob Porter was twofold. It was, it was a neat way to get at John Kelly and perhaps become the chief of staff, if you're interested in that, uh, which my sources say Corey Lewandowski certainly is, and a lot of other reporting seems to corroborate that. Uh, and then there is the issue of perhaps some jealousy with Rob Porter. Uh, Corey Lewandowski was rumored, at least, and was accused of having an affair with Hope Hicks during the campaign. Mm -hmm. That was never confirmed. Uh, and, and uh, in fact, it was, it was denied, but not that strongly, by Corey Lewandowski. But it seems like this was a neat way to kind of get two different things that you might want if you were Corey Lewandowski in this situation. Uh, it's, it's an interesting tactic, to say the least. He has reached out to you since this was published. He has, and I want to be very clear. I reached out to Corey Lewandowski probably over a dozen times over the last few weeks, trying to get him to uh, sit for an interview with me, answer my questions. We sent him questions before the story was published. And of course, he did not answer any of them. And then last night after the story was published, he contacted me uh, to tell me that I am a dishonest person with no facts, but I already know that. <laughs> so that's how he feels about the article. That is how he feels, but he did not say anything specifically that I reported was untrue. He did deny that he had anything to do with pushing out the, uh, the allegations against uh, Rob Porter by his ex-wives. Okay. Um, something else that stands out, we know that this president is not someone who apologizes. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, you write, he told her he cared about her happiness, that he understood her decision, and he would help her do anything she wanted to do in her life. He said he hoped she would go make a lot of money. Then the president added something else. I'm sorry for everything you've been through. Mm -hmm. That is a lot coming from President Trump. Mm -hmm. It is highly unusual. We don't hear him say sorry a lot. Uh, if that quote did not include, I hope you go make a lot of money, it would sound like a made up quote. It would sound like something that President Donald Trump would never say. I think he really, to the extent that he has the capacity to really care for somebody else, I think he does care for Hope Hicks. She is leaving this position, right? She's still young, mm -hmm. as we point out. Uh, there's potential legal debt there. Uh, a lot has happened to her. And legal implications. And legal implications. Well. Does she have any regrets? 
That would be a question for Hope Hicks if she inevitably uh, writes a book or, or does a, a big sit-down interview. I don't know. I can't speak for her. But be, having been around her a bit, uh, and she is, uh, this is some new reporting, she is going to be leaving the White House by next Wednesday or next Thursday. Okay. Um, that is a new timeline after the publication of my story. Um, I, I don't know if she has regrets. I think she tends to look at things like it's a, like this was an adventure, a strange adventure, uh, which is a, a privileged position to have. Interesting. Uh, as we look at that, who else have you heard from? You mentioned Corey Lewandowski who reached out after this was published. Hope Hicks, anyone in the White House? I've heard from several people inside the White House. Um, and the, you know, the reaction has been sort of... Uh, a little disturbed by some of the things in this story. Which things in particular? Uh, you know, it's some of the stuff involving Corey Lewandowski, some of the things involving John Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, but again, nobody's really pushed back on any of the actual specific points. They're not disputing. So they're not disputing it. It's fascinating too. You open the piece talking about the office that that Hope Hicks has, which was essentially a broom closet, but she can hear the president from there, and how there was all this jockeying among the men in the administration to have... And Omarosa. Yes, and Omarosa, that's true. I almost <laughs> forgot that part, that they had to have, you know, the office that seemed to come with the cachet, the office that came with the view. Right. The fact that she ends up in the broom closet and doesn't really care where she is, in many ways, speaks to the image that a lot of people have of Hope Hicks. She does things quietly. She keeps to herself. We've rarely heard her voice, even. Right. She's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. How much of that is by her own design, that she wants that to be the image she puts forth? How much of that is who she truly is? Well, that, that's a really good question. It's one of the central questions about Hope Hicks. It's, you know, is she playing a game or is she sitting it out? And, and that it's kind of allowing her to win it nevertheless. And I don't really know the answer to that. I think it might be the latter. It is a fascinating piece of living. I appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you. you.